Hi, everybody. Welcome to my channel. Today, we are going to create using these peel and stick master boards. Now, in past videos, you've seen me use this on composition books. They work great. You've seen me use it as an Insta background on an art journal page. Also works great. You've also seen me use the peel and stick to cut out at collage elements where I made the sunflower petals on this one. The question that I'm asking today is, will the peel and stick master boards work on canvas boards? Here's the master board that I'm going to use for today's project. It uses light blue permanent, dioxazine purple, a lighter purple and white. Now when I create in my art journal page, it's paper, but the canvas board is textured. It feels like material on it, and I wasn't sure that the peel and stick would adhere properly to it and stay properly adhered. So this was a bit of an experiment. So you can measure out, this is a five by seven canvas board. You can measure out five by seven and cut it and then peel and stick, or you could just lay it on top. Be careful because it doesn't go all the way to the end. There is a small bit excess all the way around. So I'm just laying it on there and I'm just tracing it. But you can cut it however works easiest for you. So I've got that line and now I'm just going to cut it out. These master boards, these sticker sheets, they are regular copy paper size. So I have excess, I can do ATCs or something else, another art journal page. Now when I lay this on top, I'm noticing that on two of the edges, I have just a little bit of white showing. And on two, it's overlapping. It's a little too much overlapping here, so I'm cutting off some. You can use a guillotine or paper cutter if you prefer, if you want a straighter edge. But it really doesn't matter, and we're gonna show ways of working with that. So now I'm peeling it off, and I'm eyeballing it on top of the canvas board. I drop it more in the center and then glue it down. Now on paper, the master board, the sticker paper sticks perfectly, but I wanted to see if it was going to stick here. Now on two sides, I have an overlap. So I need to get rid of that excess. So I grab my cutting board and my X-Acto knife and I'm slanting a little bit underneath the canvas board and cutting. Be careful not to cut the canvas off the canvas board. So having done this, what I would do would be cut it a little bit less so you have a tiny little bit of a white frame around it. I'm using the bone folder to burnish it and make really good contact. I do this when I've glued it onto paper as well. There's no overlap, there's no stickiness here. We just have this white border and edge. Now that white sometimes is distracting to me, so I typically like to colorize around. So I'm just grabbing some light blue permanent and a makeup sponge, and I'm just going to colorize, get rid of that white from there. And as I'm doing this, it's very light and pale. So I end up going over this again with the dioxazine purple. 
And just FYI, dioxazine purple and light blue permanent and white make a wonderful color combination. And here's the dioxazine purple going on. And because it's darker, it's already framing my project. At this point, I have no idea what focal point or anything I'm going to do on here. Really, this was an experiment to see if the master board, the sticker paper master board, will stick properly and stay stuck properly to the canvas board. I would like to use this to make magnets. So I grab this stencil. This is just a botanical stencil that I drew and cut out of acetate. I'm not even sure if I cut it with an X-Acto knife or if I cut it with my, I think I cut it with the Silhouette. And I decided to use Prussian Blue to get some contrast. Loving the look of this, flipping over the stencil to get the fronds going another way, and I'm stenciling again. Now the secret to stenciling is don't get too much globby paint on your makeup sponge. You pat it off, pat it in the paint, then pat it off onto your craft mat or tabletop. My tabletop's all glass, so it works perfectly. Then I'm just going to elongate this one, It's better when you're stenciling to put two or three layers to get the coverage that you want as opposed to putting too wet paint. If it's too wet, it'll tend to seep underneath the stencil. So I'm happy with the contrast here. but I decide that I want them a little bit darker, a little more opaque. So I'm going to place the stencil back on top and give a second coat. I'm just elongating the stem there. I will be outlining it with white, but I'm looking at it and I want it more opaque. So I'm putting the stencil back on place and giving it a second layer of paint. And you can see the difference. and making sure that every layer is dry in between. Really important, and quite often I cut the, that part out of the videos, but I do want you to know you need to dry it between layers. So now I'm going to put Prussian Blue. Because of what I've done, the purple doesn't seem to fit anymore, so now I'm putting Prussian Blue around the edge. I'm responding to what I've done. Every step that you do leads to other steps. And sometimes you end up doing something over. I have this word hope was sitting on my desk. So I'm thinking, oh, I might use it. Grab my white Posca paint pen and I'm just going to do some doodling on these fronds. They're a little flat because they're basically one color. I could have done some stamping through the stencil to add some interest, but the background's fairly busy, so I decided to keep it solid and add a little bit more interest by doing the white doodling.
And I'm not trying to be overly precise. Because I can't be. you got to embrace the imperfections, the sketchiness of it. So now that that's done, I'm going to see, go through my stash and see what else I can find. I have this doodle flower that I drew. I did some text stamping and then do, did, drew some doodle flowers and it's been in my stash. The word hope has been there. I like the black and white and gray of these focal images. I also had these stenciled leaves. Often when I'm doing stenciling or I have something out, I'll do extra and then that stays in my stash. I have baskets on my desk, one for words, one for focal images, and one for collage papers, little bits and bobs of things. And when I'm in the midst of creating, I'll often grab one of those baskets and see what's there. And surprisingly, they all go together. Now, I really like this composition. There are lots of different options that I come up with. And looking back now, this one works. This one works. Now, I'm undecided. So one of the ways that I help myself decide is I take pictures. And then I can see it from a different angle. Another thing to do is just walk away, stop creating, and then come back afterwards. I'm even thinking, okay, what if I turned it this way and went this orientation? And then I can just check, which one do I like better? I thought maybe the word hope was a little too big, so I shrunk it down with my printer. I'm liking the smaller size better. The scale seems to fit everything else. But again, it's a personal choice. So now that I have the elements to my focal image, both the stenciled on botanicals in the background and the collage elements that I'm gluing down right now. And I'm just using the fluid matte medium because this is just copy paper. You can draw doodle flowers. This one I use as one of my text stamps to stamp the text on them and then I doodle the flower around it. But you can use book paper as well. I think that was done with charcoal pencil, which gives it that smudgy look. I wanted to outline the doodle flower, so I grabbed my fine line applicator. Now, I haven't used it for a while, so I made sure I gave it a good shake. And I'm going around. Again, I'm not trying to be perfect. I'm adding, you know, kind of wibbly wobbly because that adds to the overall look. I go over some things, I put some loops, cup, do a double line. And I grab my fine line applicator instead of my Posca pen here because this will give a little bit of dimension. It'll stand out a little bit more than maybe the Posca pen would. And again, I'm drawing before I move on. Using the fine line applicator, it takes a little bit of time for it to dry. So now I need to decide, make a final decision, which way am I going? What orientation, landscape, big word, little word, so many decisions. Now that I have black with the word and the uh, leaves that I stenciled, 
Now I'm edging with black. How many layers did I have around those edges? Light blue permanent, dioxazine purple, Prussian blue, and now black. But like I said, you I often don't know where I'm going with something, so you've got to tweak it as you go. I'm just adding a little bit of shading just to make the flower a little bit more interesting. I'm using black paint and my angle brush. And then I come in with some white to add some highlights on the stenciled leaves. Now once this is dry, I'm giving this two coats of my Minwax Polycrylic Varnish that I varnish all my canvases and canvas boards with because I want to be sure that that sticker paper stays perfectly adhered, that at no stage is it going to lift and basically devalue what I have because I want to know if I can use this to with my craft fair makes or if I'm gifting something. Adding some splatters here, little pops of white. Silver would look good here too if you like bling. And I'm really happy to say that after putting the couple coats of Minwax Polycrylic, it kept as good as anything else that I've done. So while other sticker papers may differ, and I know dollar store ones do not stick as well, so be warned, they're not all created equal. I will link the ones that I use in the description box below, but do try with your own before you um, commit to it. Stay tuned for more videos using my sticker paper. Until next time, go get creative.